have a safety with the fire department. And what it is, we'll go there and we'll explain what we expect from them and ask them what they expect from us. Uh, and it's an important part of um, our uh, air care program is the education for all the fire departments where they will go out there on a uh, annual basis and give the training to the fire departments as far as the landing zone requirements, what we're looking for, because um, when we take off out of here we'll have the coordinates going to the accident scene that they've given to our comm center. We plug that into our GPS that's going to get us out to the accident scene and before we land we will talk to the, um, the ground person in charge of the accident scene and they will give us an, a landing zone description. and. They'll tell us about all the obstacles, what we're going to be landing on, the type of surface, and things like that. And then as crew members, uh, as a pilot and the medical crew members, we are going to be uh, verifying that information and then um, looking on the ground, making sure that it is clear and it's something safe, uh, safely that we can land into. We always have the, the right to call it off at any time as far as if we feel like we should not land in that LZ. And so we'll go and we'll land in there and uh, after, after we've gotten that um, information from the landing zone commander and then we you know, get on the ground and our medical crew does, uh, you know, takes care of the patient and then we get them back in there and that LZ commander is, does a very good job of, as part of our training, is making sure that that landing zone is safe and secure from bystanders. You know, a lot of times we may be going uh, landing on highways we need to ensure that traffic is not going to become a factor because you know, we may sit there running in the helicopter as the pilot and then the, the nurse and the doctor are getting out while the helicopter is still running. They're going to take care of the patient and the pilot's just sitting in there with a the running helicopter. We need to make sure that that landing zone stays secure and that's where the, the fire departments do a great job of keeping everyone away, everyone away from the running helicopter and so that way we can you know, complete our task and do it sa in a safe manner and get that patient into the needed care that is required for them. Uh, we would like to have 100 by 100 feet clearance, okay, when we go to an LZ. You know, we'll land in people's backyards, on roads, and things like that. And so, you know, part of that educational training that we do is, you know, they're looking for those items. And even at night when they're going to look at the landing zone, they're not only looking on the ground for objects that might be flying up, but then they're also looking at hazards up in the air where we tell them to you know, take their flashlight, shine it up because there may be wires going from the house out to the road that may not be you know, easily seen. And that's something that as crew members, we have to, they look at the LZ from the ground, but then we also have a different perspective from the air and we verify that information. And you know, they may not have seen that wire, but it's you know, still on us as we're coming in the LZ to ensure that that's a, a safe landing zone for us to get into. We go over things uh, such as when, I, when I'm uh, en route to an LZ, I will call the uh, LZ commander on the radio and I'll ask him, I'll tell him I'm five minutes out and I need an LZ description and patient information. Whether it's a road, a field, uh, whatever. Uh, maybe be landing at a hospital. Maybe they just went to the hospital. Uh, and then I want uh, hazards, and hazards will include wires, towers, uh, just anything that could be sticking up out. Actually, a lot of times you'll have sticks and stuff sticking up in fields. What they usually do there is they'll put like a vehicle or put somebody out there. Nights are very critical because on a low illumination night uh, you can't really see anything hardly out there so we have to do everything real nice and slow and, and now we have night vision, pro, uh, night vision goggles at air care which is really helping a lot but we're still going to do everything the same. We're going to go into the LZ do a nice high recon then we're going to come in nice and slow even on the landing like we always do if somebody sees something that we didn't see on the ground, they can always go, hey, okay, our, our rate of descent is so slow, we can add power and just go around. And that's happened a few times. And that's gonna happen, and, and the reason we haven't had a bad accident is because we do everything nice and slow, and we train our pilots to make sure you have plenty of power and be look, looking, so. I think it's driven in from the very beginning of when you become helicopter pilots, the ability to land anywhere uh, with a helicopter is, uh, it becomes second nature of, okay, if I'm going to land in a field or someplace, 
I'm going to verify, make sure that there is, um, you know, the landing zone is secure. It's there's not any obstacles and things like that that are going to be a problem when we when we go in there to land. So I think it becomes uh, second nature as far as checklists. Now there is training that we do because with our uh, residents, the doctors that we fly with, they're new to flying in the aircraft and we teach them to be valuable crew members. Our nurses have vast experience. You know, a lot of them, have been, I think they have an average of 18 years of experience. And so they have that knowledge now in order to ensure that our doctors, uh, the, the less experienced ones, as they start to fly with us, we want to give them that training because we want them to be an important part of that crew. And so that way they're looking out for obstacles. They know what we're looking for. And because we can't, they can't assume that we see everything from our front seat, front right seat. They have a different perspective from the left rear or even the, the nurse sitting in the left front seat. You know, she may see something that we didn't see. And, and so that's why it's important that we have, you know, a good working uh, environment, teamwork to get into the landing zone. So. We, uh, without exaggerating, it is a high risk, high pressure environment when we go out. We now take the R1s, those are the residents, their first year. We now start letting them just ride along and see how things go. And that is one of the, one area we've tried to improve our safety and our teamwork again, is just to start them even younger now, start them sooner. And when they get to be that R2, uh, and now they're the doctor that's on the scene by themselves, they at least have gone through an R1, R1 period the previous year of what is that like? What, what am I? What they now literally can see themselves and imagine themselves. What it's going to be like the next year, and I think that's a big improvement in safety. It is a huge improvement just in the way we look at um, the, the crew picture because now they really get that feel of you are a crew member. You you have aviation responsibilities, a uh, well along with. Uh, other responsibilities, medical responsibilities, but you have aviation responsibilities too. It's funny how we're all excited about doing scenes because it's new. Every time you go somewhere, they, they, they'll put you somewhere. It's a challenge, uh, but of course we're going to do everything safe, but it, it is, it's a challenge for us. And, uh, and so th they'll put us, they'll get us as close as they can to the scene, but a lot of times if, if it's too, what we would call maybe too slopey, we have slope limitations in helicopters. Uh, they may have to go another quarter mile or a mile away into a flat field, which is fine. Uh, but uh, it's, we try to get as close as we can to the scene uh, if it's a, a safe enough area. But uh, it is, uh, it's a challenge every scene, and, and uh, so it's something that uh, we look forward to. Uh, and, and the more we do it, the, of course, the better. And, of course, we always do it safe as we can do it. Working with uh, the people that I work with, the professionals, uh, whether it be mechanics, the nurses, and the doctors, that, that's a great the part of it. They're great people to work for, and, uh, and every day's a uh, challenge and fun, and, uh, and we see a lot of crazy stuff in our job. Uh, and, and again, it's, it's uh, very rewarding knowing that sometimes, uh, probably every flight that we take is not a life-saving flight, but if we can save a life, it's very rewarding. Like I said, I flew attack helicopters in the Gulf, so I actually my job was to blow up tanks and whatever. And so uh, it's, it's much more uh, uh, fulfilling to know that you're saving a life than have to be taking one. So I love it. That's the main thing I love about the job. Well, I'm responsible for the main maintenance on these aircraft uh, to make sure they're in airworthy discondition. Uh, that includes the inspections, uh, the tooling, the parts and uh, keeping up on all the maintenance is due. These helicopters that we have here are on a what they call a AAIP in, uh, uh, inspection program. It's a progressive inspection program. So we have inspections that are due on, on a daily basis that we have to look at something. Either we, every day we do a daily on the aircraft. We look it over from top to bottom. And then if we have any other maintenance inspections that are due, we do those. Pre preventive maintenance is, is the key here. We want to try to keep things from breaking as much as we can. That's why, that's why we do all the progressive inspections to do that, because the worst thing we can do is to be out of service. 
the came is what we're part of, and their, their accreditation is, is very high. Well, they